Before I start problem number six, let me just review that there are three types of integration problems. So type one is when we're integrating a base to a power, and then the integral is just that base to the power plus one on top of the power plus one plus c. When we integrate a one over u du, that's just going to be natural log of u, an absolute value, and then plus c. And the third integration that we see often is e to the u du integration, where that's just going to be e to the u plus c. So these are our three main integration formats. So we'll be picking one of these three, the power rule or the one over u that yields a natural log or an e to the u rule. So let's go ahead and pick up then on number six. Number six is how do we find the function f of x such that the given condition is satisfied? Well, if you know a derivative, the way you go back to the original function is you have to, to find the f of x, you have to do the antiderivative or integral of the f prime of x with respect to x, and that's how we find the original function. So in this case, we are supposed to integrate x squared minus 5x plus 12 dx. So we can just integrate each term one at a time. So to integrate x squared, we just take x to the 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 minus. When you have a constant times x, when we, um, so if we were just to break this up and do integration, um, integrating each term by term, to integrate 5x, we can bring the 5 out front, and to integrate x, x is to the first power, so we just take that first power and add 1 to it, and then divide by that 1 plus 1 number. Whenever you integrate a constant dx, it's just that constant times x, and then we have a plus c. So in the end, we have x to the third over 3. Oops, that should have been a minus 5x to the 2 over 2 plus 12x plus c. That is our function. Now, they, the problem gave us an initial condition that f of 0 is 3. So that means f of 0, if we replace all the x's with zeros, then the y value, what the result should end up equaling, is 3. So 0 to the third is 0 divided by 3. That's just 0 for that term. 0 squared is 0 times any number is going to be 0. 12 times 0, again, it's 0. So on the left side, we just have a plus c, or c, and that equals 3. So for, based off of the initial condition, we know that c is 3. So now we already found our function right here. And now we have this new piece of information that the c number is a positive 3. So in our answer choices, we're going to look for one-third x cubed minus five-halves x squared plus 12x and then a plus three at the end. And so that is answer choice C. So answer choice C is our answer to number six. On number seven, we're supposed to just write the summation notation for this expression on number seven. Well, on number seven, we have six terms all being added together. So th this is the summation notation. And what we're summing up, all of these have a g of x. And then the um, numbers start at one and go up to six. The numbers go from one to 6. And so what we should do is just say i equals 1 to 6, and we're subbing, summing up g of x sub i's. 
So that's the summation notation. Here's the Greek S for summation. I runs from 1 to 6, and we're summing up G, X sub I's. So if we fill in a 1, we get G, X sub 1. And if we fill in a 2, we get G, X sub 2, and so on. So we're just practicing the notation. On number 8, if you have the notation already given to you, this is even easier because you just start by replacing I with a 1, and you count all the way up to 5 with the I's. So when I is a 1, that's our first term, plus when I is a 2, that's our second term, I is a 3, and we keep going until we hit I is um, a 5. So we have these five terms, and to express the sum without using summation notation, this would be the sum, and we can be more specific and say this is a 6 plus 12 plus 18 plus 24 plus 30. And this is fine, or we can go ahead and say what the sum is. And let's see, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, I think it's 80 when we add that up. 30, 40, 54, 64, 74, 84, 90, excuse me, it's 90. So this sum is 90. Okay, but um, this is fine, just writing it, expressing the sum without using the summation notation, you can just write the sum out, 6 plus 12 plus 18 plus 24 plus 30. To approximate the under area under the graph of f of x, if f of x is x cubed plus x squared plus 1, between um, over the interval 0 to 4 by dividing the interval into 4 subintervals, what we're going to do is first figure out our delta x, how wide is an interval, and it's b minus a over the number of subintervals. So our a number is our lower limit, b is the upper limit, and so 4 minus 0 goes on top, and we're, we're chopping this up into 4 pieces, and so each piece is going to be 1 unit long. So first, I'm going to graph, see what the graph looks like, of this function. So we're going to look at x raised to the third plus x squared plus 1. And I'll just zoom in um, a standard zoom for starters to see what this looks like. And we're only looking from on the interval from 0 to 4. So if I trace, when x is 0, y is 1. And when x is 4, y is 81. So if I want to look at this and see a little bit better, I can change my zoom to be decimal to kind of um, zoom in, but my Y needs to be higher up into the 80s. So if I go to window, I can change my window and, and raise up my Y maximum and call it something like 90 to make sure that I'm going to be able to see in the graph what the picture looks like. Okay, so, th but the important part here is that when we start at x is 0 and we go up to 4, so again trace when x is 0 and we trace up to where, oops, let me just hit enter, and then we trace up to where x is 4, and I just put 4 in here, what we see is, is that on this part of the curve, and let me just adjust my window a little bit more so you can see more what's going on, is let me make the y minimum so we can, I'll make it like negative um, 20 just to stretch out so you can see a little more of the graph. So, and what we know is that at zero, the, oops, I don't know what I just pushed. 
I meant to push trace uh, and then to see what happens at zero it's just one and then as we said before at four it was 80 something I guess I just adjusted the window again but what we saw from the graph is that the graph is just going it's going up so it at zero the y value is one zero one and then out here at four the y value was 81 so what we're going to do is we're going to split this into every one unit we're going to make a mark and so on our graph we're going to mark off every unit and then we're going to find a box and it doesn't matter if we use the the left hand or the right let me see it, it does say excuse me it does say choose the representative point in each subinterval to be the left endpoint of each subinterval. So we're going to start with the left endpoint and then bring our box from the left over to find the area of these boxes. So we just need to find the area of these four boxes. So the area of the first box is going to be height times the width. And so each time the width is one unit wide. And so on the height I can make this go a little faster by using my table of values. So th the height is going to be, uh, let me just make note in my notes here that f of 0 is 1, f of 1 is 3, f of f of um, 3 is 37. Oops, excuse me. f of 2 is 13. f of 3 is 37. And that's all I need. 1, 2, 3, 4. So to find my areas, I need to take each of these heights times one to find out how much area is there. So really area one, since each of them we need to take the delta x times the f of x and every time delta x in this case is just a one so it turns out that your four areas are going to be just what these um, f of x's are, 1, 3, 13, and 37. So if we total up all these areas, 54, we can estimate that this area is about 54 square units. So on number 9, that's the answer, is that the area is approximately, so the total area under the curve is approximately 54 square units. Bear with me here. <laughs> I have this real rudimentary uh, setup on on my filming here, so it's pretty comical actually if you could see it. Okay, so let's keep going. Let me see. Oh, 14 minutes. Actually, I better stop, and I'll start a new page on a new video.